Al Hassan al Basri, you should all know him, a famous uh, Tabi'i, known for his piety and knowledge, said, A believer is a stranger's world. He is never afraid of its humiliation, and he never competes for its glory. The people are in one situation, and he is in a different situation. The people are content with him, yet he is in turmoil with himself. Yani the people think, MashaAllah, this and that, and he himself knows of himself and the calamities he's upon. What no one knows, he's dealing with himself and trying to rectify himself every day, and the people don't even realize it. This is the true believer, according to Al-Hasan al-Basri. There's a very famous ayah which has been misunderstood by many, and the Prophet ﷺ clarified it himself. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا عَلَيْكُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ لَا يَضُرُّكُمْ مَنْ ضَلَّ إِذَا اهْتَدَيْتُمْ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَرْجِعُكُمْ جَمِيعًا فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ O you who have believed, take care of your own selves. If you follow right guidance, no harm can come to you from those who err, from those who make mistakes, from those who don't follow. He said, Ali Sallam, that does not mean that if you, Allah has guided you, you can say to the rest of the people as they say now, Khali Wali. Okay? Well, let them just go, who cares? As long as I'm guided, and inshallah everybody else ends up in Jahannam, it doesn't matter if I wind up in paradise. Huh? Just in case someone understood the ayah this way, the Prophet Ali Sallam clarified. He said, Nay, no. Indeed, order good. Enjoy the good and forbid evil until you see the stinginess being obeyed and desires being followed. You will see these things. Stinginess being obeyed, desires being followed, and this world is preferred over the next. And each person being deluded by his own opinions. Then take care of yourself and leave the common people. For indeed, after you, after you, there will be days of patience. Listen to this. After you, there will be days of patience, where patience will be like holding to glowing embers, burning coals. Holding on to the deen will be like holding to a burning coal. How long can you hold on to the burning coal? One second. Before you, you drop it and you start panicking and you call the ambulance and the whole nine yards. But the days will come when holding on to the deen will be like holding on it without letting go. It's going to be tough. Really tough. And we're not even seeing all that, but we're seeing some. Whoever is able to do this will have the reward of 50 people that do like him. The Sahaba asked, O Messenger of Allah, the reward of 50 of them or 50 of us? He replied, the reward of 50 of you. And the hadith is rewarded, uh, reported by a tirmidhi and Abu Dawood, and it was authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani rahimahullah ta'ala. So a person nowadays can have the reward of 50 of the Sahaba. Can you imagine Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Sa'ad and, and uh, uh, the Uwais and uh, all of these, all of these Sahaba. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari and the list, Abu Hurairah and the list goes on. 50 of them, one of us today is is entitled to this reward. But even if that person gets that reward, he will never be like the Sahaba. He will never be as good as the Sahaba, as we will see at the end of the lecture, inshallah. You'll see why. But in terms of ajr, Allah Azza wa Jal gives ajr to whomever he wills as much as he wants. So how would it be if one of us were to meet Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah with, with rewards equivalent to 50 of the Sahaba, because he was adhering to Islam today, where would he wind up in the company of who in paradise? With the Prophet ﷺ. For eternity. Not like you will visit and then go. Huh? Five minute visit and then someone say, come on, time is up. Yalla, go back to your castle. Which will still be nice. But no, that person will be for eternity in the company of the messengers and the siddiqeen and the shuhada and the salihin. For something that we can do today and we will see it's, it's basic things. Do a, a few things and leave alone a few things and khalas. You're there. With this fitna, with this fitna, all we're being asked for is something minor. Minor. We're not doing anything at the level and the, the, the magnitude of that of the Sahaba. They were, they were sacrificing their lives and their wives and their wealth and their neighbors and their parents. Everybody was put at stake for the sake of Allah. Now we're being asked a few things and we're falling short. And we will see a narration at the end of the lecture which will blow your mind.
Because most of us have never heard that narration even though it's in Bukhari and Muslim. And you will see that most of us in this lecture hall and elsewhere have possibly never heard that narration. But I will leave it till the end inshallah, it's time shall come.